From a character inspired by action star Steven Seagal to gourmet dishes handcrafted by an award-winning chef, the untold truth of the menu is chock-full of tasty tidbits. The menu is a very tightly wound film with a lot of precision, but that doesn't mean there wasn't room for improvisation on set. Stars Anya Taylor-Joy and Nicholas Holt revealed that they had plenty of time to improvise together while filming. In a video segment for Vanity Fair, Taylor-Joy explained that director Mark Mylod wanted all the actors to be improvising while the camera was on other characters and they were sitting in the background. Taylor Joy revealed. So we we committed to the improv like pretty hardcore the first couple of days. Taylor Joy also confessed that she improvised a line during a scene with Rafe Fiennes and was terrified afterwards. During the scene in question, Taylor Joy's character Margot primly tells Fiennes' character Chef Slowick thank you as he's leaving their table, and it's clearly a passive-aggressive move on her part. Taylor Joy recalls adding the line and thinking, "Very Fiennes is going to think I'm an absolute brat because that was not scripted." <laughs> Mylod kept her ad lib in the film and she felt vindicated as a result. John Leguizamo plays Georgie Diaz, a washed-up action star who's pompous and arrogant. He's clearly past his prime, but still behaves as if he's on top of the world. As it turns out, Leguizamo based his performance on a real actor, former co-star Steven Seagal. If I find out you're lying, we'll come back and kill you in your own kitchen. Leguizamo told The Ultimate Rabbit, I modeled after Steven Seagal because I did a movie with him and in rehearsals he knocked me out and he didn't care. As the story goes, Seagal shoved Leguizamo against a wall after losing his temper. Leguizamo brought up the fact that he used Seagal as his inspiration for the menu in another interview with Entertainment Weekly, confirming that the film they clashed on was 1996's Executive Decision, one of Seagal's better-rated movies. Leguizamo told the outlet, I had a bad run-in with him, he's kind of a horrible human. One of the central tensions in the menu is the fact that Margot doesn't want to eat the food Chef Slowick has so painstakingly prepared for her. Tyler, on the other hand, who's played by Nicholas Holt, is in his element. What this meant for Anya Taylor-Joy was that she didn't have to spend much of the film eating, unlike Holt. Taylor-Joy discussed how impressed she was with Holt's eating abilities during an interview with BBC Radio 1, revealing that he attacked every take with so much gusto and fervor, and somehow managed to keep it all down. Holt told Vanity Fair that the hardest day on set was when he gorged himself on bread, a day that Taylor-Joy described as breadgate. If the high dining experience shown in the menu feels very real, that's because a real-life superstar chef was a consultant on the film. French chef Dominique Crenn, the only woman in the U.S. with a three Michelin star restaurant, worked to make the menu described in the script a reality. Crenn crafted many of the dishes herself, often redoing them several times when scenes required numerous takes, according to The Hollywood Reporter. One dish, which features a scallop balanced atop a rock, is a near replica of a dish at Crenn's own restaurant, San Francisco's Atelier Crenn. Crenn told The Hollywood Reporter, every dish was created in a way that the actor could feel and eat with emotion. She also spoke with Rafe Fiennes about the psychological aspects of his character, describing how mentally exhausting it is to be the head of a restaurant of that stature. Does Kren see herself as a mad genius like Chef Slowick? The chef told Bon Appetit, I'm not as crazy as he is, but I understand his way of thinking. Nicholas Holtz Tyler is the resident foodie in the menu. He's not a chef himself, but he's obsessed with the world of food. As such, Tyler has obviously watched every episode of the Netflix docuseries Chef's Table, something he proudly admits to. If you've watched Chef's Table yourself, you might have noticed some similarities between how that series and the menu were shot. These similarities were intentional. Chef's Table creator David Gelb was actually hired as a second unit director on the film, reports the New York Times. Gelb's entire purpose for being on set was to film the restaurant and the staff in exactly the same way an episode of Chef's Table would be shot. Fans of the series will likely recognize the slow-motion close-ups and the focus on small details, the bright heat of a blue flame, the precision of a hand laying down a tiny piece of food on a plate. The film's climax is also a reference to Chef's Table. Director Mike Mylod told The Hollywood Reporter that the final s'mores dish was an homage to a dessert made by Grant Ackett's at his restaurant in Chicago, which was featured in an episode of Chef's Table. Ackett's dessert is laid out over the entire table, which Mylod expanded to encompass the entire restaurant. The aerial shot of the s'mores dish is a tribute to that specific dessert, but also to the cinematography of Chef's Table as a whole. The Menu is quite a mysterious film in which the backgrounds of some characters are left in the dark. That's especially true of Elsa, the austere hostess character played by Hong Chow. Speaking with Awards Radar, Chow described the process of deepening the character of Elsa, which involved a lot of conversations with director Mike Mylod. She explained that she was shooting a movie in Portland, Oregon when she got the role, and she wanted to bring some of the city's funkiness to the character. Chow had her own ideas about how Elsa should look, though Mylod wasn't especially receptive to them, at least at first. 
Chow told Awards Radar, Mike Mylod and the writers were imagining that Elsa would be very plain and not stand out, that her clothes would sort of lack any personality. Luckily, Chow found an ally in Amy Westcott, the film's costume designer, and also the director's wife. Amy Westcott was very willing to conspire with me against Mike Mylod, Chow went on to explain to the outlet. The outfit they ended up with, a sort of modern Victorian look, is unique enough to give Elsa some personality, but not too zany that it contradicts the serious atmosphere at the restaurant. The menu was written by Seth Reese and Will Tracy, two comedians who have plenty of experience in satire. Reese spent several years at Late Night with Seth Meyers, and Tracy worked on Succession, and both screenwriters previously worked for The Onion. Of all their career experiences, it was their time at the satirical news website that proved to be most influential in the making of the menu. Reese told Slash Film, "...this is a very oniony type of movie in terms of how specific the world is that we're creating, the language that goes into that, and then also how sad everyone is." Judith Light is a veteran Hollywood actor known for her vast body of work on television, in film, and on Broadway. She has a small but important part in the menu, that of Anne, a wealthy woman who frequents the restaurant with her husband but doesn't seem to enjoy the food all that much. Speaking with Cinema Daily, Light explained that she's a foodie herself, something that drew her to the role. Light told the outlet, I'm a cook. My husband's a cook. We had a restaurant in Aspen, Colorado. I'm fascinated by that, by the chemistry of cooking, by the joy of giving to other people. And that's always been a big thing for me. Light went on to say that she grew up in a family of female cooks, which is why it was such a pleasure to see the famous French chef Dominique Crenn in action during the shoot. The actor told Cinema Daily, "...the experience of her is watching a great artist. There's a kind of beauty and simplicity and centeredness, and a very zen quality that she carries within her, where she is the creation." Certain roles require actors to do intense prep work, whether it be learning a new skill, perfecting an accent, or transforming their bodies. For the stars of The Menu, preparation for the film was far more enjoyable. Speaking with The Hollywood Reporter, Anya Taylor-Joy joked, "...this was a very hard job in terms of research. Both Nick and I spent a lot of time on the couch watching uh, Chef's Table." Is really hard. Nicholas Holtz Tyler is obsessed with shows like Chef's Table, so binge watching the series was always going to be helpful for him. However, he didn't stop there. Taylor Joy also revealed that Holt went even further in his research, actually going out to eat at some of these fine dining restaurants himself. Holt joked, I went and ate nice food because I had to. Anya Taylor Joy and Nicholas Holt have shared that they did a lot of improvising while their characters were sitting in the background. But there was one moment of improvisation that was front and center. Near the end of the film, Chef Slowick reveals to Margot the extent of Tyler's deception. He had known all along how the night would end and invited Margot anyway. When Margot hears this, she slaps Tyler across the face. As Nicholas Holt told BBC Radio 1, Tyler definitely deserved a slap in the face, but that moment wasn't actually in the script. Anya Taylor Joy explained her decision, saying, I have a thing about feminine rage. She went on to reveal that she often gets scripts that have men doing terrible things to women, and the women just sitting there and absorbing those terrible things, upset but not angry. After reading the big reveal moment in the script, Taylor Joy went up to director Mark Mylod and told him, I'm really sorry, but the only way to play this truthfully is for me to, like, attack him." Mylod eventually came around to Taylor Joy's way of thinking, and she got to react to Tyler's betrayal authentically. How did Holt feel about the slap? The actor joked, and I, I didn't like it. I, had to <laughs> I didn't like it one bit. Chef Slowick's menu for the evening was meticulously planned out, which is part of the reason why he doesn't take too kindly to the unexpected appearance of Margot. To make matters worse, Margot is entirely unreceptive to his brand of culinary genius and refuses to play along as one of his dutiful, awestruck guests. Most of Margot's stubbornness is in the script, of course, but Anya Taylor-Joy made a character choice on set that made her dislike of him even more explicit. Unfortunately, she put herself in a bit of pain in doing so. She told BBC Radio 1 that she thought it was important that Margot have her back to the chef in order to illustrate how she really feels about him. What this meant in practice was that Taylor-Joy had to be constantly twisting around to look at Chef Slowick while he delivered his monologues about the food. She told the outlet, "...that essentially meant three months of, like, the worst neck pain you could ever possibly imagine." <laughs> Taylor-Joy expanded on the experience further in a video segment for Vanity Fair, noting that, despite the back problems it gave her, "...I still maintain it was a good choice." 